Hi, so today we've got an interesting bit of uh, 1980s former Soviet technology. This is a Trel 2 Trel 2 phone auto dialer. The idea is that um, you'd set your phone on here and then you could dial up to 40 stored numbers on here. There's 20 buttons here and then there's like a shift that gives you another 20 buttons. There's a little area here where you can write the numbers down. Uh, there is a speaker here. I don't think this acts as a hands-free, but it does allow you to monitor the call while, it, while it's doing the dialing. I think you then um, actually have to pick up the um, receiver to actually uh, do the call. I'm not totally certain. I've sort of tried some auto-translates on various bits of this um, manual. So as far as I can see, the um, the speaker is just for sort of call progress bond. Even comes with uh, some barely readable schematics and a uh, PCB layout, which is nice. Um, I got this quite a few years ago. I can't honestly remember the details. I think somebody emailed me or tweeted there was this interesting thing on eBay. And okay, you know, a piece of like phone equipment isn't particularly interesting. But what is really fascinating is how they actually did the storage of the numbers. So it stores 40 numbers, each with up to seven digits. Now, if you think sort of this is from 1985, the actual sort of manufacturing date was 1985. I don't know how, how many years this was in production before then. But if you think about sort of early 80s Soviet Union era, okay, they, you know, they might have had microprocessors, but they would have probably been too expensive to use in a device like this. So how would you store 40 seven digit numbers without using a microprocessor? And the answer is under this cover here. What we have here is an array of 7x4 magnetic cores. And this uses a system basically exactly the same as they used on things like the Apollo 11 um, flight computer, uh, which was core rope memory, where it was a read-only memory where the data was encoded by whether or not a wire goes through a particular core. So, for example, on here to set up um, one particular number, there's a, there's a sort of key in here showing the encoding of the various digits. So there's all the numbers at one to one to zero down here, and then you've got what is basically a binary encoding. So you've got two, three, four, five, etc. In binary, there's another number here. I think that's like a stop code for when your number is less than seven digits. And so the idea is that, let's say for sort of the first number, you, t you take your piece of wire, stick it in this hole, there's like sort of spring contacts in here, and then you thread it through. So for example, if you want your, so the, the, these are numbered one to seven here, so these are actually the, num yeah, the, the numbers in the dialing sequence. You know, so if we want this first digit to be say a one, the numbers are encoded by the, um, which one the wire doesn't go through. So say a one would be encoded on here like that and then so for example if you want the next digit to be a two the encoding for that would be out of the first two so it'd be outside outside and then inside inside here so that encode the second digit two so you'd repeat this now obviously with 40 digits this thing's going to end up like a bit of a bird's nest but it's just a, an ingenious way of yeah for information that you're not going to want to change very often but for the end users to be able to do it without needing any processor it's just a classic sort of bit of soviet problem solving using rather unusual tech to actually achieve you know, achieve the results um relatively low cost and there's not a huge amount say there's the uh, the number buttons this i think is the shift for the upper and lower bank there's a volume control um that's probably sort of on off hook or something and a couple of lights on there and on the back which got these there's a power switch couple of other buttons I'm not quite sure what those are and then we've got the interesting mains connector so there's sort of two female pins that go onto these male pins here but also a cavity here and from the drawing in the uh, manual it looks like there's actually some sort of fuse um, arrangement in the plug itself and then just two wires to the um, phone line obviously the phone connects separately to this there's no you know a lot of the time you'd expect the phone to connect directly to this but for some reason it's done as a it's two separate um, connections and you can just about sort of figure out this this is the um the mains plug and sort of fuse sort of fits in the end of it somehow it's some sort of combined sort of plug and fuse holder arrangement which is uh, a little bit weird let's take a look inside and then uh, maybe see if we can actually get it working so you can see we've got this um array of cores you can actually see the magnetic cores here there's a winding around each core that goes, that's connected locally but there's also a set of six wires that go through each core and it looks like there's some sort of bypassing going on so I'm guessing these six are probably these will be um, what encodes the actual sequencing 
So I suspect that each of these sets of wires goes through yeah, each of these sets of wires goes through a different permutation of the seven cores. So you've got six wires starting here and ending here. So of those six, each of those six goes goes through a different combination of the cores to get that encoding of the um, seven digits. We've got a load of logic chips here. Um, some transistors here. I'm not sure if those are sensing or driving. The schematic's pretty hard to read because it's, it's very uh, small. There's a load of logic chips here, most of which start K155. Yeah, so I'd imagine that's probably the yeah, Soviet Soviet version of 74 TTL. There's a read relay here. That's probably what's going to be interfacing to the line. I think this is pulse dialing rather than tone dial. There's a transformer down there. Again, that's probably line interfacing. Cute little filament lamps for those um, panel indicators. Main transformer there, smoothing cap, probably a, a transistor for a voltage regulator. Speaker, say no sign of a microphone. It's another re another um, read relay here. So one of these is probably for holding the line open, one is for doing the um, pulse dialing. Um, no solder resist, this is, feels like a sort of slightly papery sort of um, PCB material. Probably been flow soldered because sort of, yeah, the solder tinning on all these um, tracks which look like it's been um, laid out by hand. Manufacture date there of uh, 8, 1984. Screws are a mixture of sort of slotted but there's this slightly offset crosshead style which I've uh, never seen before. If that's a peculiarly Russian uh, style of uh, screw. Under here we've got a few, few more transistors, some uh, interesting little flat leaded um, diodes for the bridge rectifier. I think this grey thing is probably an inductor. Again this little uh, green transformer. A few uh, interesting looking capacitors. But I'm considering the functionality. Yeah this there's 20 logic chips and a few transistors which is yeah pretty impressive for uh, yeah because they're using this sort of very clever method of storing it um it's a quite impressive bit of a uh, minimum yeah minimal design interesting detail that the case looks like it's been molded but it's got this um sort of plastic wrap of this sort of wood effect thing presumably to make it look like a sort of a more luxury uh type product that looks like it's been sort of stuck on by hand after the uh, moulding. Unfortunately I don't have the mains lead so I've just improvised a uh, mains connection to this. And this does appear to work. I've not put any programmed any numbers in yet but if I sort of press one of these digits light comes on and I can hear the read relay clicking. Let's put the microphone close to it you can hear it. And that clicks for seven lots of digits and then this light comes on. I think that's this button on the right is probably, a re yeah this button I think is a reset or a restart. Um, if this one's pressed then yeah we get this light here so this is the upper bank select. So let's try programming a number in and uh, see if it actually works. So I've just wired this up um, so the number one is one two three four five and number two is three, two, one, and then you, I've used the blank thing to provide gaps. So if we, I've put a lead here across the um, read relay coil. So if you press button one, see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we've got this line indicator, and then two, three, two, one. There's a little bit of delay while it, go, while it goes through the blank um, ones, but it uh, still goes on, so you can do anything from a sort of one, one up to um, seven-digit number. Okay, I think I've uh, figured this out. So unfortunately, the schematic's not detailed, very detailed, and the way it's laid out's a bit confusing. But basically, um, this is the array of rings, but each of these columns is actually the same ring. So we've got a total of 28. And the way this is set up is that we've got these digit driver transistors and if we look at these crosses, these crosses show where the wire goes through a ring from these drivers and if you look we've got no connection here, no connection on four rings here, no none on four. So basically when one of these is on it puts current through all the rings except one group of four which represents one of the digits. So the idea is that when this is on, when current is flowing here it effectively saturates the magnetic field in that ring, effectively disabling it. So, and so if we, we can see we've got um, some circuitry down here which will be generating the digit selects 
and we've got some sense coils ra- wound around the ring and again this is sort of very unclear how this works up here but we see we've got effectively a binary signal that's going across here to some amplifier transistors and this will be doing the decoding into the number of pulses to generate the sketched out sort of what this looks like excuse my writing but a little bit more clearly so for each of the seven digits it basically energizes everything except the digits i'm interested in so it's passing a current through all the cores effectively disabling them by saturating them it then sends a pulse through whichever program wire is selected so see the uh, that the bank of switches selects which of those program wires that get knitted in and out actually gets energized to read it and then we have four sense lines which are basically the sense coil from each row of four coils we're generating four effectively binary signals so that say any unselected row is saturated so there's no coupling across this transformer the ones that are unsaturated will couple a pulse from the program wire into the sense coil and that will then go into the sense circuitry so for example if we send a pulse down this program wire it will generate a pulse in only this coil because this is the only one that's looped in and all the other rows won't generate a pulse because their digit select is energized and it's saturating the coil effectively disabling it and so for example if we switch select this program so this represents one of the 40 stored numbers the current pulse will flow through these two transformers and we'll get a a signal out of just these two and not those two which give us that binary representation of the number we've selected and of the yeah that particular digit it's quite hard to make out on this switching but i think the upper and lower bank selection will again there'll be a way of where it selects which of two banks of these program lines get that gets the pulse through it so that's probably a fairly simple way of doubling up the numbers i haven't figured out the exact details of that and if we take a close up look at the coil we can see that this bottom is the sense coil obviously there's multiple turns so that the current passing through this wire generates a higher voltage that's easier to um detect we've got our sort of programming wire and then we've got these are the wire these are the um select wires for the uh, digit select so there's a set of six of these each of these passes through all except one core so that whenever any one of these uh, any one of these wires is energized it disables six out of the seven cores by saturating it and if we look at the waveforms the top line is the current through the the, um, programming wire the second is the current through one of the digit select wires and the other two traces are the output of two of the um, column bits um, this is just set up for th- a three digit sequence the pulses are getting wider because it's programmed with one two and three so these last for the duration of the uh the dial pulse sequence that's probably just a convenience for the uh the electronics and if we look at that in more detail the current flowing in the select wire in the yeah you know, the number select wire on all digits these short ones are the blank you know unprogrammed digits we've got the current in the digit select just for that digit digit on its own and you can just about see the um the pulses so that we've got sort of one zero one zero zero one 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 as our two two of our bits which then dictate the number of um pulses that it's going to give to uh, produce the dialed number a couple of little differences i've noticed um, when i've been probing around this sort of differences in the convention between um soviet and western components these diodes these are little sort of germanium um point contact diodes but the markings are the opposite the uh, red is the anode whereas of course in um, western devices the marking is usually the cathode also on the transistors there's um one wire is connected to the case in this case it's actually the base whereas again in western transistors it's usually the um collector that's connected to the case it's interesting they sort of the, the mounting they use for both of the transistors and also things like this capacitor um, I wonder if that's partly sort of from you know, military conventions to reduce the effect of vibration by using these the wires to um, sort of provide a bit of shock absorbing. Well, there's actually yeah, these are these are actually sort of floating around, probably in a military thing. Uh, they've been na- nailed down a bit better, but um, I suppose also the with the transistors, they're probably germanium transistors, so these leads probably also to um, reduce the heat that gets conducted into the device because germanium is quite sensitive to heat because it's got quite low um, low melting point. So maybe that's another reason for. Um, doing the leads like this so i thought it was a very bit of interesting uh, application of uh, sort of unconventional tech to solve uh, a, a real world problem you know given the, the limited um tech available at the time so uh, and say the same technique was used yeah literally going to the moon quite sure i'm to do with this um if anyone's sort of particularly interested any collectors or anything uh, get in touch because i've got no particular use for this so uh, might as well go to a, a good home somewhere